Ja. Hi and welcome to this poorly overdubbed English version of Noisecraft. In today's episode I want to show you how to attach some of those sweet sweet LED lights to your mallet instruments, which is either absolutely awesome or totally stupid depending on what you're into. I think that LEDs can create a delicate atmospheric light useful in all kinds of situations, especially in small concert rooms which might not even have actual stage lighting. Guided by four general rules, I want to show you how and where best to attach the lights and I also want to show you the mistakes I made so that you don't have to. Let's begin. This was supposed to be some kind of unboxing part, but we don't have time for that, so here's the wrap up. When you purchase an LED strip set, it normally includes an AC adapter, an IR controller box that controls the LEDs and receives the incoming signal from the remote control, said remote control and the actual LED strip. 16.4 feet is a standard length and should be more than enough, but it depends on your project. There are bigger and smaller remote controls on the market with different numbers of colors and effects. The smaller ones are not necessarily cheaper, so keep an eye out. A set like this is available for 2 to 20 dollars, so it's not really a huge investment. I chose a strip on which every LED chip is capable of displaying every color, contrary to strips where there are several chips next to each other for red, green and blue. I would highly recommend this, because this way the colors will blend better, especially on a short distance. In addition, you'll need sturdy scissors, maybe some tape, velcro if you want to make the strip detachable, which might be necessary anyway for disassembling your instrument. Here I thought that I would need a flat screwdriver, but you don't. And zip ties, which are useful for testing positions on your instrument. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Right at the start, I'll give you tip number one, which is kind of obvious. You need a long, flat, straight surface for the LEDs. First, I tried sticking the lights to the center tube from below. I measured the strip and cut it at the marked spot. Then I attached the strip to the loop side of a self-adhesive strip of velcro. Normally they are too wide and you have to cut them in half down the middle. The AC adapter and the controller box will need a piece of velcro too, because we are going to stick them to the instrument as well. That is also where I started. After some position testing with the zip ties, I attached the hook side of a velcro tape for both AC adapter and controller box to the marimba frame. The controller has to be directly next to where the LEDs are going to be, because they have to be connected with a short cable. After that, I attached a narrow strip of velcro to the whole length of my center tube, leaving only a gap at the hinge because my tube can be folded. Here, the strip will not be connected to the frame, but that's okay. I plugged everything in, tested it, and super! Until I realized at a recital that the audience could see the lights if the instrument is standing on a stage. This leads to the second rule. The audience cannot have a direct line of sight to the LED strip, because that is really distracting and not the effect you want. So the underside of the center tube or the bar rails are right out. We'll continue directly with tip number 3. The LEDs shouldn't blind you while playing, because that would suck. So a place like the player side of a bar rail is also not feasible. A trip to the hardware store helped me with this problem. I picked up a plastic angle bar, sometimes called PVC corner. I put a velcro strip on the inner broader side of the angle to attach the LEDs. And also a strip on the outer thinner side to mount the whole thing onto the frame. This way the strip is facing downwards, solving your blinding problem. As it happens, that also implements my last tip. Create indirect lighting by pointing the LEDs towards the floor. The light will look great that way under your instrument or even against the resonators. That leads to the question, where did I put my LEDs in the end? At first I attached the angle bar behind the center tube until I found out in another field test that the half-lit marimba looked silly. In the end, I found the perfect spot for me and my instrument. I attached the angle bar to the player side of one of the bar rails, the second one counting from the front, to be exact. It sits there just low enough so it won't touch or interfere with the bars. This place takes every criterion into account. A long, smooth surface, no line of sight to the audience or to the player, 
and the strip is facing downwards. Many bar rails also have a hinge. Here I had to cut the angle bar in half, but that would have been necessary nevertheless, since the whole thing is much easier to pack this way. You should be able to do it the same way, but every mallet instrument is different, so as long as you're in the trial and error phase, use zip ties. And that's it! If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe and maybe even share, or leave a comment if you have questions or suggestions. Have fun with your illuminated marimba and thank you for watching. Bye!